Hello there, it's me, Egil. Egil, the warrior, the trader and the storyteller. Today I'm going to speak about swords. Everybody seems to think that Vikings, you see them leaping ashore and everyone's got a sword. Well, it was an elitist weapon. You had to be a social class, probably aristocratic to own a sword. It was phenomenally expensive. And even a humble sword like this would be the equivalent today of the top of the line Ferrari. But let's talk about the naming of the parts of the sword. We'll start from the top and work our way down. Here we have the pommel. This balances the blade so when you want it to go there, it goes there. But also if you're in close quarter and you have a shield wall, you can't use it like that. So you turn it around, bridge of the nose or in the centre of the skull, you do damage. If a horseman's riding by, turn it around, under the chin, his jaw's shattered. That means he's not paying attention to you. The cross guard or quillions, this is when you stab, your hand doesn't slide down the blade. And we come to the blade. The blade, this is a reenactor sword so it's not sharp. But this would have been sharp and the point a little bit pointier because the sword in Viking times was a slashing weapon. It was considered quite effeminate to stab. You had to it's a hacking movement. And of course the handle, wrapped round with leather, sometimes it's wooden and even ivory. So those are the parts of the sword. And we know then that only wealthy or aristocratic people could carry swords. So how can we tell a sword apart from anything else? Well, this, the pommel. This looks a bit like a loaf of bread, so that's a Danish sword. So I'll just put this one away. Ignore the blade on this, but the Norwegians went for triangular types of blade. And like everything else, things progress. Next on from this, we have a Norman sword. This, meant to be operated slightly longer, from the back of a horse. Again, the pommel. In this case, down and again, slash. Put that one away. By about the 1200s, swords were worn mostly for fashion, and this is a typical example. Notice we have a cross on here, it's a fine handle nice cross guard and it's more for fashion but you could still cut it and catch a nasty wound from this. So there we have the different types of sword. In this series you'll hear us talk about Vikings, Normans and Saxons. Saxons. Now let's go through this. Sax means knife. So the Saxons were the knife people. Viking times, single-edged weapon. They came in various sizes. Here's one for eating, which most people who were free would have one of these. Notice the shape of the blade. It's the oldest type of blade known so far. So we just put that one away. Put it down there. This is a larger one. This is more fighting one. But every farm would have something bigger or smaller than this. And this is like the sabatier. You chop your food up with it, you skin animals with it, and you fight with it. Now, when the men were away, the women would defend the farm. And I show people when I go to demonstrations how you can kill three people with three strokes or this. But they do it right-handed, of course not left-handed. So, wear it thus. You draw it out, it goes across the eyes. You turn it, the next man down past his neck. Then sets you up, 
above the naughty bits and unzip. Three people, three strokes. It's things like that that keep you alive. But they came even bigger. Here's a, one example. A Langersat, single edged. Again, more like a machete. The Norwegian one, this is a fine piece of kit. Langer sax or even Britta sax. Nice, handy weapon. Maneuverable, either hand. And again, a slashing weapon. But again, a single edged sword. It's very effective. And as I said, it's more a chopping weapon and that gives you greater maneuverability. Got all kinds of movements you can do with that. A fine weapon. So basically that's a thumbnail sketch of the sword. There are varying uh, differences in pommel style as in everything else. So next time you see a Viking leaping ashore, be sure if you see him with a sword he'll be of aristocratic rank. Until we meet again, Fahil. Here's some close-ups. This is a Norwegian pommel triangular in shape. Turn it around so you can all see gently. There you go. The next one. There we are. Looks a bit like a bishop's hat. Turn it around so you can see. Here we have a Norman type sword, big meaty pommel on this one, turn it round so you can see, there we go, put the other one up, a decorative sword and if you notice it has a cross on it, handle Ivory. Here we go. A bit of chasing around the bottom, if you notice. Very fine sword for a fine officer. There we go. I'll show you some different handle materials while we're here. Here we have the leather handle on the Scrammer Sax. Sorry, Langer Sax. Or bone, which will be probably more common because there's more of it about. Notice the pattern on there. Just because you're poor doesn't mean to say you can't have a bit of style. And this one, it's got a turned wooden handle. Ergonomic, I believe, is the phrase. You can get a good grip on that. Again, it does the job. And for the poorest of the poor, an eating one. And this one's got a name on it, Rune Egil Thorson, whoever he is. But it's a handy size for eating. And that brings me finally to this. Now the handle on this has got a cap of antler and it has a dragon that's been burnt on it. Copper bands has got eggil scratched in. Needs a clean before you say it. But a handy tool nonetheless. Deadly. So that covers about everything. So, till we meet again. Bye.